Uh, section nine point two. Oh, sorry, that should be nine point two over there, not nine point one. My bad. Lopatol's rule. Lopatol, or however you want to say it. I don't know. I don't care. Here's the deal. Indeterminate forms. An indeterminate form. In other words, something you cannot solve. If I get a fraction with 0 over 0, I have a fraction of infinity over infinity. Infinity times 0, infinity times infinity, um, x to 0 to the infinity power, infinity to the 0 power, something like that. These are called indeterminate forms. You cannot solve them. You cannot figure out what they are. Okay, they're not necessarily undefined, but you can't really define them either. Okay. If you are trying to take a limit of a function and you get this, you get an indeterminate form. You get basically a limit you cannot solve. They are still solvable. Okay, so if you're doing substitution and you get one of these forms, in our case, the only ones we will be dealing with in this class are where you get either 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. We will not worry about the other indeterminate forms in this class. So if you're taking the limit and you get one of those forms, there is a way to solve the problem. And that's Lopatil's rule which says, let f and g be two functions such that f of a and g of a are equal to zero and such that f prime of a and g prime of a exist. In other words, when you plug in, when you substitute a into, into f and into g, you get zero. But the derivatives of f at that point and g at that point do exist. And if f prime of a is not equal to 0, then the limit as x approaches a of f of x over g of x is equal to the limit as x approaches a of f prime over g prime. Normally, when we take the derivative of a rational function, we use the quotient rule, f prime g minus g prime f over g squared, that does not apply to L'Hopital's rule. L'Hopital's rule says if we have a rational function and we cannot do solve by, find the limit by substitution because we get 0 or 0 or infinity over infinity, take the derivative of the numerator, take the derivative of the denominator and try again. If that doesn't work, take the derivative and try again. Until you don't get 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. You can have 0 and 1 or the other, just not both. You can have infinity and 1 or the other, just not both. Okay, so you take the derivative, try again. Do you get 0 over 0? Do you get infinity over infinity? If not, that's your answer. If you do it, you can actually take L'Hopital's rule and apply it again and take the second derivative. And in theory, keep going. Okay? That's L'Hopital's rule way of let you finding the limit when normally you can't. Okay. Now, why don't we teach this at the time we teach limits? Because you don't know how to take derivatives at the time we teach how to do limits. You have to do derivatives. And so I kind of just slapped this on the end. This is something new that AP added to the requirements for Calc AB for your guys' test. You will see a question or two probably on multiple choice about using L'Hopital's rule. It's not that hard. Everybody have this down? Okay, so it is clear by direct substitution the limit will give us an indeterminate sum. So if we plug in 1, 1 squared minus 1 gives us 0 in our denominator. Okay. Sine of pi is 0, so I get 0 over 0. Indeterminate form I cannot do that. So I can apply L'Hopital's rule. So this is equal to the limit as x approaches 1 of the derivative of the numerator, which would be the derivative of the sine is the 
cosine. So it's cosine pi x, but chain rule, got to bring the pi out in front. So it's pi cosine of pi x. And the derivative of x squared minus 1 is 2x. Can I substitute 1 into there and not get 0 over 0? Yes, because I know my denominator won't be 0, so I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. We'll figure out what the numerator is. Substitute. I get 2 in my denominator. I put 1 in for x. Cosine of pi is negative 1. Negative 1 times pi, my limit is a negative pi over 2. Easy peasy. If you can't, if you plug it in, you get 0 over 0, infinity over infinity. Take the derivative, try it again. That doesn't work. As long as, once you don't get 0 or infinity for either one of those, you stop and evaluate what you have. Okay? So I do the same thing on this one. If I plug in 2, I get 0 in my numerator. I get 0 in my denominator. Doesn't work. So what do I do? Apply L'Hopital's rule. I get the limit as x approaches 2. I take the derivative of my numerator. 2x minus 4. Derivative of my denominator. 3x squared minus 12, and I try again. If I plug 2 in my numerator, I get 0. Uh-oh. If I plug 2 in my denominator, I get 0. Oh, crap. I get 0 over 0. What do I have to do? Do it again. So this is the limit as x approaches 2 of 2. Okay, I'm not I'm going to have to stop after this one for sure. No matter what happens to my denominator, I'm done. And my denominator is 6x. I know I'm not going to get 0 in my numerator, so I'm not going to get 0 over 0. I have to take my limit, plug in 2. What do I get? Get 1 over 6. Okay? That's it. Easy peasy. Really, it's not, it's not that difficult, but it is. Could you have done this before? No. Now you know how to do it. Okay, now you know how to do one that you could not have done before. That's really what this does. Yes? You would say it does not exist because that was the best tool you had at the time. Okay, now you have more tools in your toolbox you can actually... Do it. Okay. Um, this is actually a lot of 